And welcome to Veterans Memorial Stadium, where today the Quincy Presidents will play host to the Hanover Hawks in the President's second game of the 2020-2021 football season. My name is Jonathan Caleri, and thanks for tuning in to this edition of QA TV Sports. As I mentioned, it's the second game of the season for the Presidents, looking to get their first win of the season uh, on opening day. Back here on March 12th, the Presidents lost to uh, Pembroke by a score of 32-21, and then last week they had the game canceled, uh, unfortunately due to COVID concerns. Concerns, uh, so looking to get their first win here against the Hawks of Hanover. I'm being joined up here in the booth by Jim Timmons and Jim. Uh, football's back here in the city of Quincy, and as I mentioned, Quincy looking uh, to get their first win here in the season against the winless Hawks, who come in with a record of 0 and 2. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've been at this, John. Um, the boys have not been out on a football field since, if I'm correct, the fall of 2019. And uh, I think the last time you and I were together would have been Thanksgiving in 2019. And um, that's a long gap between football games. Um, they're sliding in a spring season, an early spring season, and the weather has certainly cooperated. Today is a spectacular day as Drew Beretti kicks off for the Presidents. Uh, kick goes right up the middle of the field. Going to be fielded by Hanover at their own 13-yard line. And uh, going up to the right side is a ball carry. That's Dylan Rice, and he's going to get pushed out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. And we're underway here at the stadium. Yeah, nice job by senior Marion Robinson on that play. He just held his ground, um, knocked the uh, return man out of bounds. So... Pretty good field position for Hanover to start. This is traditionally a good football program. A lot of good athletes in the community of Hanover. Um, and they have good programs. So this will be a good test for the President's John. We'll get over, go over rather, some of the names um, over the course here of this first quarter. All right, Hanover comes up in a three receiver, excuse me, four receiver set. Quarterback is Connor Monroe. Quickly passes over to the left side and it's complete. And the receiver's going to get brought down. They're going to say his forward progress was stopped at the 38 yard line. Looks like it was Dylan Rice again on the reception. Yeah, Jared Walker out there from a defensive back position. J Jared's only a junior. Uh, read that play beautifully. Um, was right on the receiver at the catch. Limited the yards after catch to just two. It's going to be a second down and eight for Hanover. All right, again, in the shotgun is Monroe. Monroe is senior for the Hawks. Hands it off, and nice job there by Quincy coming up to make the initial hit on the carrier was Muhammad Khan, and maybe a gain of one on the play. We'll see where they spot the ball. Yeah, Khan, one of the senior captains of this team and showing terrific leadership. And uh, as a result of his play there, nice hit right at the line of scrimmage. Hanover is going to be third and long here, John, in their first possession, third and six. Quincy defense, nice job coming out of the box here, and let's see if they can't hold on for three and out. Monroe looking to pass over to the right side, fires downfield, it's going to overshoot his receiver, and Quincy defense holds him, as you said, so it'll be fourth down and long for the Hawks. Yeah, Will Plouffe on the coverage there, another junior. There are names that you... Um, I'm not going to say you would recall because, as I mentioned earlier, it's been a long time since we've been here, but Will Plouffe's a name we've mentioned before. Um, while he's only a junior, he's experienced, they're going to call on him a lot today, and he is the deep man on this first punt by Hanover. Let's see if the Presidents can't turn this into some nice field position here. Low snap, but uh, just does get it off. 
And it's going to be fielded by Quincy High, number 14, at the 25-yard line. That's Will Plouffe, and Plouffe's going to get a few yards in the play to mark him down at the 34. Well, decent field position, but more importantly, Preston has did a great job of pressuring the punter there. Um, everything was done well by the presidents in terms of their special teams execution. They get in on the punter, they pressure him. Plouffe with a nice clean reception on the punt. He made a nice decision to run it back right up the middle there and um, picked up about seven or eight yards. And the presidents are going to start with decent field position, John, at the 34. And this is going to be our first look at uh, Drew Beretti the junior quarterback for the Presidents. Presidents come out and split eye backfield and Brady's going to hand it off. That's to number six, Isaiah Steinberg. And Steinberg might get a yard on the play before he is pushed back and they say he gets up to 35 so he'll be gaining a one. Yeah, Steinberg's a real talent. They'll be going to him a lot tonight, we expect. He was terrific when last we saw him in 2019. Very shifty. He should have been stopped on the backfield, John, right at the, the uh, handoff. The handover uh, defensive line had some great penetration there. They got a little monster out the left tackle position. We'll get his uh, number four. You can see him just towering over everyone. Number 79 for handover. All right, Brady and Shotgun looking to pass, and it's complete over to Matt Kelly, and Kelly will pick up the first down flag on the play. Looks like he might have a face mask on Kelly, or excuse me, on the defender who brought down Matt Kelly, and we'll see what it is. Yeah, a very simple, nicely designed play where Kelly came out of the backfield. Um, for the receiver, slot receiver, cleared out the defensive backs. Kelly came in behind them, took a nice pass from Beretti. Um, that was well drawn up and very well executed. President has taken advantage of an over-eager Hanover defense, John, um, on that last set. And if you take a look at this now, the linebackers are right up behind the defensive linemen. They're only two or three yards back, focusing on Steinberg right now. And that was a, and you see the linebackers again trying to penetrate. Beretti hands it off to Steinberg over to the right side this time. And Steinberg does a nice job, gets away from a tackle in the backfield, and they're going to mark him down at the 32. Yeah, nice, nice job by Steinberg. He picked up five. They gave him to the 33, picked up five following the right tackle, right guard out there. And again, we're going to catch up on names for you. Um, I apologize for not having our uh, normal level of due diligence here. I'm going to blame the Quincy Sun. Does that sound fair, John? <laughs> I'm sure Bob Bosworth would love to hear that. Yes, yeah. I was. They are so reliable every year. And Again, Steinberg, Steinberg on the carry, gets away from one tackle in the backfield, and he'll get up to the 25-yard line, and that'll be enough for a first down. I'll tell you, um, mock him as I always try to, but we missed Bill early today. Love to have a replay on that. Um, great job by Steinberg of identifying where the seam was there and sliding through. Uh, this Hanover defensive line, they're big and they're physical, but so far Quincy's done an excellent job of uh, owning the line here. They're firing off the ball at the snap, they're doing a great job, and uh, that's why you see the handover linebackers up close trying to plug the gaps early. Uh, they're very wary of Steinberg in this Quincy running game. First and ten for the Presidents at the handover 25-yard line. Steinberg again in the carry over to the left side, gets hit, and he'll get brought down by number 75. That's Tyler Coleman, one of the captains for the Hawks, but not before Steinberg was able to get a gain of two. Yeah, there wasn't much there, but Steinberg, nice job of getting out and um, picking up some yards. And the key here is they're keeping Hanover focused and wary in regard to the... Uh, the running game and let's see if that doesn't open up something in terms of the passing game here as presidents break the huddle knocking on the door here they're on the Hanover 22 yard line in their first possession second down now for the presidents 
Ready in the shotgun, hands it off to number 21, Jared Walker, over to the right side. And Walker takes a big hit. He gets across the 20 up to maybe the 19-yard line. Yeah, that hole closed quickly. Walker identified the uh, right spot to go to. So far, presidents have been predominantly right-handed in their running game. They're running behind... Um, Oscar Lee, a junior right tackle, and Riley O'Connell, a junior uh, right guard. So those two guys are doing the bulk of the uh, run blocking at this point early on. Third and about four now for the Presidents. Need to get to the 15 for a first down. Steinberg on the carry and stays on his feet and will finally get brought down there. Coming up for the tackle was Joseph Curran for the Hawks to clean up the mess. And they're going to say they put the ball at the 20-yard line. Let's see what Quincy decides to do. They do have a kicker, a sophomore, Helena Middleton. Uh, I think this is probably, you're looking at about a 37-yarder, which would be a real challenge. So Quincy at the 20-yard line here, particularly after that first defensive stand, they've made the decision to go for it, John. You can't challenge that here. They're at the 20-yard line. It's too close to punt, too far to try the field goal. And the way the offense has been so far, they've had pretty good success. It's a good decision. They have one guy in the backfield here, Jared Walker. And right. Hanover is going to call timeout. 5.27 left to go here in the first quarter. And when we come back from the timeout, the Presidents will have a fourth and five from the Hanover 20-yard line. Uh, Jim, for our viewers here in uh, the city of Quincy, um, might not be familiar with the Hanover Hawks. The Hawks have a new nickname this year. Uh, it's the first time this season playing under the Hawks moniker. Uh, so a little bit of a different thing. Um, uh, so when people hear the Hawks from Hanover, just notice the change as we go from there. A um, couple of new changes all around the league. You know, North Quincy is now just the Raiders here as well. So uh, when you hear some different calls, uh, that's what will be going forward so people can get used to that. Tell you, it's about 55 degrees, John. Now, in the fall, that'd be a bit of a cold night for us. But you're here in the short sleeve shirt. Engineer Chris Potter, who's always running around and working hard anyway, uh, he's here in a short sleeve shirt. And uh, it's interesting. It's just a very pleasant. This may be the most pleasant atmosphere we've broadcast football in to date. <laughs> like you said, it's 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 funny that, you know, at 55 degrees in, in October, you'd be like, oh, it's a little chilly out here tonight, but, you know, in March, we're going to take it any way we can get it. That's right. And especially yeah. today, there was a possibility of rain and whatnot, and it's been a, a fantastic day. I'll see if he got him to jump offside. Great job by Beretti. He gave a hard count, and over-eager Hanover Hawk jumped offside, and with that, the presidents are going to pick up a first down. Terrific job by Beretti. Beretti's new under center. He's only a junior. Doesn't have any experience, but that was a uh, the type of thing an experienced senior quarterback would do. Nice job by Beretti. So the presidents pick up a big first down. They keep the drive alive. They're burning time off the clock, and um, they're in the 50. They're at the 15-yard line in the red zone. Let's see what they can do. All right, so as you said, first and 10 from the 15. Handoff goes to Walker, and he is brought down immediately. Big tackle there. Try to get the number. It's number 88, uh, Christian Carlson for the Hawks coming up with the tackle. Yeah, I will say in fairness to Walker, that hole closed very quickly. He didn't have too much of an opportunity. You saw him kind of pitter-patter there as he got to the line. Uh, and this is where Steinberg, uh, I get a big kick out of watching Isaiah Steinberg run because... He is so quick, and he can change speeds, he can change direction, and um, he's very artful at finding holes where none exist. Um, the young man in there now, Jared Walker, he's a big running back. He's uh, a muscle banger type guy, and that's uh, Quincy's trying to soften up Hanover early on. Send the man in motion, but they're going to hand it off to Walker to the left, left side this time. Excuse me. And Walker will get brought down at the 13-yard line. Maybe the 12. We'll see where they spot the ball. 
And it looks like it's going to be on the 13. Walker to the left for a gain of three. President's bringing in a little different package here. On that particular play, Ryan LaRoche, one of the seniors, um, was signaling to the sideline after laying a block out and um, having Hanover nonetheless stuff the play. And sure enough, Bring presidents are coming out with a different offensive package. Looks like they're going to have uh, an empty backfield with Steinberg lined up right next to his quarterback here, Beretti. Let's see what they do, whether they go to the air, Steinberg coming out of the backfield. Beretti rolling to the right, fights off one tackler and might get back to the line of scrimmage. And it looks like it's going to bring up a fourth and long now. They're going to say no gain up to the uh, back to the 12. So we're bring a fourth and seven. A little closer if they wanted to try a field goal, but um, again, it'd still be about a 30 yarder. And if you look at the top of your screen, you see the uh, first down marker just outside the, t the uh, six yard line. So they have to get inside the 10 down to say the five yard line. And um, everything gets more compacted when you're in the red zone, right, John? It certainly does. This is where the, the bend but don't break philosophy of Belichick comes into play, where you can let them down and maybe give up the three, but not the, the touchdown. Boy, I'll tell you, bend but not break went out the window a week ago with Coach Belichick, his <laughs> GM Belichick. He opened up the coffers, and the Patriots uh, completely... Uh, rework their roster. This is like the good old days of 03, 04 when all of a sudden there were all these. I still remember in the first Super Bowl when the Pats won, a guy named Ty Law picked off a ball, ran it back for a touchdown, and I was like, who is this guy? Because <laughs> he was new to the Pats, and now he's in the Hall of Fame. That's how long Bill Belichick has been around. Um, outlasted the great one Tom Brady and he's going to be ready to take the field this fall with a brand new uh, roster which should be very very interesting. That's essentially what the presidents are doing today John. We'll segue back to the boys in blue and see what uh, head coach Kevin Carey and the offense have come up with here is Beretti on a big fourth down here. 3.04 left to go here in the first. As you said, fourth and about seven for the Presidents. Beretti in the shotgun. Fakes the handoff. Passes it down the middle and incomplete. Was looking for number 14, Will Plouffe. And Quincy was hoping for a flag there with maybe some pass interference, but the refs say no, it was clean, and it'll be a turnover on downs. Yeah, well, there was the experience factor. Plouffe was where he was supposed to be. Uh, Beretti overthrew him. He actually delivered a nice ball and it was on target, but there was a linebacker between Plouffe and Beretti, and as a result, uh, Beretti was a little high with the throw, so not a bad drive for the Presidents, John. Had they stalled out, punted, and pinned in over back at the 12, everyone would have been pleased, so this is a tough starting position for Hanover. Let's see if the defense can't step it up again. Come up with another stop here. All right, again, senior Connor Moreau, the quarterback for the Hawks in the shotgun. Hands it off, and running back's going to get across the 15 to about the 17. <laughs> Looks like it was number two on the carry, uh, John Bert Bertoncini. Yeah, we had a couple of guys in on that play. Number uh, 32, Gabriel Rodriguez, and number 44, Matt Kelly. Matt, one of the senior captains, um, they were in there on the tackle. And uh, Matt gave a helmet slap to uh, big number 61, who had stuffed the lead blocks. That's senior Rene Marquez. So, nice job by the defense. Man in motion for the Hawks. Bertoncini gets in the backfield. And he's going to be hit immediately and brought down. Nice job there by the Presidents. Number 53, Luke Murphy. And also coming up there was Rene Marquez, the man just mentioned, Jim, for the stop. Yeah, Marquez is definitely winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. He's done a terrific job. Um, Hanover's trying to run to their left, the right side of the uh, President defense. 
but Marquez, who's at the left guard spot, he's just off the center to the left of the center, is doing a terrific job of plugging the gap right at the line of scrimmage. So it's going to be third and long for Hanover, John. And uh, we don't have our graphics today, so... Oh, we do have our graphics. There you go. They're not up on this screen. Rolling to his left pass is complete over to the left side and right at the first down mark it goes the ball carrier that's Aiden Scalzi and it looks like he should have enough for the first down and he does. Aiden Scalzi with the first down. Yeah, that was a uh, nice play by Hanover. If they execute, you know, you have to tip your hat to them on that. There wasn't a lot the president defense could do. So Hanover picks up its first first down. They keep things alive. They're still well inside their 25, John. They still have lousy field position. So the Presidents, if they bear down here, can still get a win out of this possession. Spot the ball at the 23, first and 10 for the Hawks. Bertoncini gets the carry over to the left side, makes a couple men miss, and will finally get pushed out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Yeah, he had a big body out in front of him, number uh, 79, Brian Thompson. Thompson, only a junior, but he's definitely a monster. Um, running back was following him, and uh, he picked up, uh, we're going to give him six on that. It's going to be a second and four. Connor Moreau, the quarterback for the Hawks in the shotgun. Man wide open over in the flat, over to the right side. That's number 19, David Quinlan. And he's going to pick up a few extra yards after the catch as well, up to the 40-yard line and another first down for the Hawks. Yeah, Quinlan just went out and sat there in a little gap he found behind the linebackers. The ball was actually delivered late. Ciro Mora, a senior, defensive back. You see him there, number one. Boy, did he deliver a hit. So a nice tackle on that play. First and 10 from the 39 now for Hanover. 17 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Pass complete, and nice job there on the tackle coming up for the Presidents was a Marion Robinson, and maybe a loss of one, they're gonna say back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, nice job by Robinson. He made the tackle essentially in the backfield, and first quarter clock is gonna run out, John. And uh, fast moving first quarter, reasonably well played first quarter here. It's gonna come to an end with the score 0-0. Zero, zero. Presidents look good though. Um, statistically, I'd say they outperformed Hanover and they definitely did a nice job. They, they won the field position battle here as evidenced by the fact that Hanover, uh, let's see, they're having a little problem relocating the sticks here. Hanover's got their ball, uh, got the ball rather on their own 39 yard line. So we'll see what the presidents can do on what will be a uh, big second down play, John. Be nice to see if they can put them in a third and long again. They've had success doing that. And uh, the Hawks did pick up a first down on one occasion. Any of you who are noting the uh, silent gaps with John Caleri and me prattling on, John's uh, lost his ability to do like five different things at once. <laughs> I can tell you're not in game shape here because normally John flawlessly keeps track of all the, he's our statistician, he keeps track of all the data on his iPad, uh, but can also provide some between play comments. But that's sorely lacking today, my friend. No, it looked like I, um, I wasn't able to, I didn't have the Conor Monroe in as the quarterback for, for the Hawks, so I needed to update that in my, all my gotcha. stats. I forgot to put that in, so that's what I was going back to, all the past plays to make sure the stats would be, would be correct. President's making an adjustment here based on this three receiver set for Hanover. All right, second and 10 for the Hawks. Monroe pass over to the right side. It's picked off there by the president, Sierra Monroe. 
on the interception, going over to the right side now, crosses midfield, and will finally get brought down out of bounds at about the 47-yard line, but a great pickoff there by Mora. You know, on an earlier play, Mora was kind of reading the quarterback's eyes, and he went in the wrong direction, and they hit a receiver who had come out uh, and just sat on a little square en route. Um, again, Mora was reading the quarterback's eyes there, and he did a terrific job of getting back on the ball and uh, making the interception. So, terrific stuff here. And the president's both sides of the ball playing really solidly. What do we got? We have a hold on the return, huh? That's unfortunate. So the presidents are going to lose some yardage here. They're going to be backed up to their own 35, but they've got the ball, and they've got their offense out there, and let's see what they can do on this possession, John. This second possession, correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. This is another first, uh, doing football in um, March, but also doing it with a mask on. <laughs> so, I just tried to drink some water and wasn't sure why my lips didn't why get did wet. <laughs> <laughs> but my mask did. All right, so presidents come out at their own 35 yard line. Ready to try and set up his screen, completes the pass to his eyes, his eyes, Isaiah Steinberg, excuse me, can't spit that one out right there. And Steinberg will get up to the 38 yard line. Thank God his number's a single digit, right? <laughs> He'd really be vexed. So, yeah, Steinberg was about to boogie there, but he got caught from behind. So, although the play didn't, uh, you know, create what they had hoped for. Still a nice little four-yard gain, and then importantly, it gives the handover linebackers a little something extra to think about, a little different look, because thus far, handover has been very aggressively getting right up on the line of scrimmage defensively. Watch the linebackers, like number 88 there, you can see in your screen. Watch what happens to him. He's going right at the ball, notwithstanding the fact it's a pass play. Great job there by Barretti. Rolls out to his right by some extra time and finds a Marion Robinson at the 48-yard line, and that'll be enough for a first down. Yeah, Hanover is clearly committed to stopping the run. And if Quincy opens up its attack a little bit, it looks like Barretti is going to be able to uh, steer the ship here. He's doing a very nice job so far. They break the huddle here, knocking on the door of the 50-yard line, the 48, first and 10. Ready in the shotgun, and he's going to keep it himself, and will get up to midfield. They're going to say no, he actually got down at the 49, so only a gain of one on the play by Beretti. Yeah, that time they faked the dive to Steinberg. Um, just and Beretti was just taking a look at how everyone was reacting there. Presidents know that Isaiah Steinberg is the focus of this Hawk defense right now. They're trying to figure out ways to test them. And uh, so far it's been a mix of running and pass. Second down and about nine now for the Presidents. Just under 10 minutes to go here in the second quarter. Walker gets the carry this time, and his forward progress is going to be stopped after he crossed midfield, and they're going to say he's down just past midfield for a gain of one on the play. i got to tell you, senior Tyler Coleman for the Hawks did an absolutely terrific job. He just wrapped up and would not let go of Isaiah Steinberg, who's, although he's somewhat diminutive, he's not the biggest guy in the field, he is all muscle and he's a very strong running back. He's hard to bring down. Well, on that particular play, Coleman would not give up. He's one of the captains and he showed some terrific leadership there. So we got a third and long at the 50, John. 
Beretti in the shotgun. Looking to go down field. Pass made it. Got tipped at the line of scrimmage. And he was looking for a Marion Robinson, but it falls incomplete. A very late call on that one by the side judge. I think Robinson had trouble handling the ball because it got tipped. You were correct about that. And that one came out uh, wounded duck style. And uh, coming onto the field is... Uh, Number three, Dylan Wright. Let's see, Beretti's doing the kicking as well, huh? Punting tonight for Quincy. All right, so Beretti will go out to kick it away. Back deep is Dylan Rice for the Hawks. And there she's got a fake pass, or fake punt, excuse me, pass is complete to Jared Walker, uh, but it will not be enough. Walker will get up to the 47, and that's where the Hawks will take over. Well... That was close to being a solid play. Great snap. The long snapper for Quincy did a terrific job. He did his job. Um, Beretti delivered a nice ball out there. Um, I think Coach was a little upset that some of the blocks didn't set up the way he hoped, but uh, he's showing some confidence in his defense. You can't question that early on here, the fake punt. Um, so far, the presents have looked solid on defense. They seem comfortable that they can stop this Hawk offense. So the field position's a little better for the Hawks. Let's see if they can't come up with a play here. Hawks going deep on first down, and it is incomplete. Monroe is looking way downfield for number three, Dylan Rice. And Rice was trying to get a one-handed spectacular catch, but couldn't bring it in. Yeah, with him step for step was Ciro Mora. It looked like Mora might be beat because the ball was delivered over his head, but what Mora did was he played the ball very well. He got his right arm out there. It was, as John said, an over-the-shoulder catch along the sideline, and Mora got his arm in there as well. I'm not sure. Would love to see the replay there, but it's nonetheless second and ten here. And Quincy's going to jump off sides. Nice job there by Con Moreau, the senior quarterback for the Hawks, to use his cadence. And Quincy's going to jump off sides and give the Hawks a free five yards. Yeah, that's too bad. That's an, an over-eager junior trying to get to work. And um, those things happen here. So five-yard penalty is going to uh, give Hanover a little... Uh, reprieve from their first down and completion. It'll be second and five here. Four receivers set for the Hawks. They're going to hand it off to number 21, Luke Rogers. And Rogers will get up to the 46. Nice tackle there by Jared Walker. Coming up from his defensive back position. Good yeah, solid well, tackle. tackle so far, uh, Quincy's looked very solid on both sides of the ball, John. We had that one little jump off sides, a penalty. But other than that, the boys are executing well. Um, they're tackling well. They're, they're really doing a nice job out here. Third and about three now for the Hawks. Pass into the flat is complete over to number three, Dylan Rice, and he's going to be stopped shy of the first down. Nice job by the presence to come up. Looked like it was Matt Kelly on the tackle, and they're going to say he's a yard shy of the first down. Yeah, huge tackle by Kelly. He met the uh, the, the running back, a little head of steam there. Uh, it was essentially a lateral, that pass, and um, the running back had about five yards and was just pretty much under sail there when Kelly hit him. But Kelly nonetheless held his ground. It was a solid stop. And it's going to be a fourth down and one play. Let's see what happens. This is a, the first big play for the Hanover offense in this first half. And with that, Hanover's going to call a timeout to discuss things with 7-10 left to go here in the second quarter. We'll come back with a fourth and one for the Hawks at the President's 44-yard line. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm, I'm uh, you know, different cultures apparently, but Quincy High, you see the players um, down on their sideline. They're all distant, distancing. 
Uh, you look through the stands, the fans are distancing. You can tell that the message from the Quincy Public Schools, the Athletic Department, Principal Larry Taglieri, is uh, to comply with the governor's recommendations for distancing at the game. And you look across the field and everyone on the Hanover side, fans, players, everything all bunched up. Not quite sure. You know, uh, it's, it's sometimes one of the difficulties here during the pandemic, John, where you have people who are complying with the efforts and the recommendations of the governor and then uh, those who do not. And um, it's an interesting uh, juxtaposition here of different approaches. Hanover bunched up. That looks like they looked in 2019 on their sideline. And the presidents are uh, all distant here. So here we go on the big fourth down play. They're going to the air for it. And they have a man w open downfield, but they cannot connect. Quarterback Connor Moreau overshot yeah, his intended Moreau. receiver, David Quinlan. And Quincy catches a break there, Jim, as By Hanover was going for the home run, and they can't connect. Turnover on down. Ball. Uh, yes, and um, Isaiah Steinberg is making it perfectly clear that uh, he knows the athlete who probably should have been back there and he's questioning why he would not have followed up. Um, I think the coaching staff's going to address the issue now as well. Um, it's, you know, it's one of those things where the athletes are out there and some of them are anticipating something's going to happen. And um, in this particular instance, Hanover appropriately identified a guy in the president's who they thought might bite on a fake, and he did, but president's got lucky. And they got and lucky again oh, there, too, Jim. Looks like there was a uh, miscommunication on the snap out. count. Right, and right. And Brady was not expecting it, but he's able to fall on it. But see, there you saw good coaching and good execution. Beretti has clearly been taught that if he mishandles a snap, just get down on it, that you don't want to have an issue with a fumble, don't try to do too much. Um, as we've mentioned a few times now, Beretti, only a junior, seen his first action, so the coaching staff wants to bring him along in a manner where they minimize mistakes, and he did exactly what he was taught to do. So uh, the mishandled snap play costs the presidents four yards but the coaches are fine with taking a loss of yardage versus a turnover here. All right, second and 14. Handoff goes to Jared Walker. Has his face on the right side. Crosses the 50-yard line. One man to beat. And he's going to get pushed out of bounds. But Jared Walker with a huge play all the way up to the Hanover 30-yard line. Oh, terrific job there. He found the seam and he exploded through that hole. And again, the Hanover linebackers are playing up awfully tight. They're right up trying to fill the gaps at the line of scrimmage and once uh, Walker got outside there he got just outside the right uh, the left tackle of Hanover and once he did it was clear sailing. Terrific job and the president's now on the 30 yard line of Hanover their second time in the uh, the red zone. Did I miss a replay there? Were we able to run a replay? Uh, no, this is the, the delay on the stream that you're watching on the computer there. Okay. Steinberg, All right, Steinberg on the carry, and he's going to get hit in the backfield for a loss of about four yards back to the 34-yard line. Tyler Coleman with the tackle for Hanover. Brings up a second... Yeah, we should say that we uh, QATV is happy they'll be able to provide live coverage of this football game uh, here today at the stadium uh, and live on QATV Channel 8 and live on our website at QATV.org as well. Uh, so we want to thank everyone that is watching live. Uh, happy to help out uh, the both teams here this year for the, the Presidents and the Raiders because uh, obviously there's a limited amount of fans that can come into the stadium. So try to get as many people to watch as possible uh, while the game's live. All right, Beretti rolling out to his right, looking downfield, and it is incomplete. Was looking for number seven, Ryan LaRoche, but they cannot connect. Yeah, LaRoche was very well covered there. That play was designed for Beretti rolling out to have the option, but also the hope was that uh, Hanover was going to 
bite on the run and he thought LaRoche might be open there but they missed the connection there and with the incompletion he's got to bring up a third and ten and uh, we're at 503 correct John? Correct 503 left to go in this quarter. got to tell you another thing that would be nice to do is just pan around the fields here like uh, the, the facility is just beautiful. Folks may recall a few years back when the Boston Cannons were using veterans as their home stadium they renovated it and uh, did so to the tune of 1.2 million dollars and the facility is just in spectacular shape right now really first-class facility um, the electronics first class it's one of the reasons we can bring the game to you live and um, it's a, a terrific venue for high school sports high school athletes here in Quincy yeah, I'm sure uh, other schools certainly enjoy coming to the stadium now like I said Jim it's uh, really nice seeing everything they come in see the big scoreboard and certainly the biggest scoreboard <laughs> in any of the high school places all around on the south shore uh, and you know the, the seats and it's just a nice atmosphere to come to watch a game now all right third and about 14 for the presidents but ready it does a nice job looks like Hanover's gonna jump off sides and they do so it's gonna be third and nine now as you said nice job by Beretti he's uh, smart he's well coached you're seeing both of those uh, factors here or qualities on on several different plays a lot of little things that he does he's doing a terrific job uh, he's very steady and seems to have a reliability about him that uh, wearing the number 12 can bring to a quarterback, John. All right, so as you said, Jim, we'll bring up a third and nine for the Presidents with the five-yard offsides against Hanover. Ball spotted at the 29-yard line. Three receivers to the right of Beretti. Beretti looking over the middle, and it's complete to Sierra Mora. Nice job there by wow. Mora to bring it in. And a huge first down pass there for the Presidents all the way up to the 15-yard line. Mora is having himself a first half here. Um, he had the interception earlier. He's had a couple of very nice defensive plays. And there, a uh, tough reception in traffic. Uh, beautifully delivered ball by Beretti. Mora makes the catch. Drive stays alive. Clock running down now to 440. And uh, the president's on the move again inside the red zone at Hanover's 16-yard line. First and ten, John. Four and I beg your pardon. Yep. Go ahead, John. Four and a half minutes left to go in the quarter. Steinberg on the carry, and he's going to get up to about the 15-yard line for a gain of one. Coming up to make the tackle was Tyler Coleman Steinberg for the Hawks, senior for the captain. I've been looking for one of the seniors here and now I've, uh, I've located him on the sidelines. He's not in today's game. Uh, Bobby Janey, that's a big loss to the uh, presidents. He's a linebacker and he's been a running back and he's out on the sidelines in street clothes. So. Oh, nice cutback. So Jared Walker still on his feet, fighting his way forward. He's going to be right up at the first down marker. Walker made a man miss in the backfield, and he was able to sneak away from that, find a hole up the middle, and get up to the five-yard line, and it is enough for a first down. Yeah, Walker looking Steinberg-esque out there. He mixed in a little bit of Isaiah Steinberg with uh, some Walker power and a terrific run right up the middle. And uh, the worst first down location, oh no, they're at the, uh, the 5, not the 10. All right, so they're at the 5, and it's uh, going to be first and goal. Terrific job by the Presidents. Clock running down. It would be great if they get paid right here and then the first half. 
a very solidly played first half with a touchdown. All right, first and goal from the five. Walker on the carry, trying to fight his way up the middle, moving the pile forward, and a great job there by the president's offensive line to get another push, and they're going to spot him down at, looks like the two-yard line. Yeah, a name we mentioned a little earlier. Um, it was in the context of, of defensive play, but Riley O'Connell, last guy up off the pile. And uh, we also saw... Big number 54, Parker Mullen, who's only a junior. Uh, Mullen is the center who has been really reliable. And they're just doing a great job here. Moving the ball, and uh, looks like Canover is going to call a timeout. That could be a response to fatigue here, John, versus any types of adjustments, because um, the presidents on the last couple of plays have just totally owned the offensive line. Uh, or I should say the line play, the line of scrimmage. They've been firing off the ball beautifully and essentially doing what they want to do. So this group looking very solid today, John. John, you've seen the Raiders once, right? Uh, yeah, we saw the Raiders a couple weeks ago. We saw the Presidents uh, here at the stadium as well on that first week. Um, Maybe as we break for the half, we could talk about... Uh, Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving game, which uh, folks can serve turkey in April. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it's going to be interesting, Jim. Uh, like you said, having um, Thanksgiving on a uh, on a Friday night here at the stadium. Uh, certainly, the first time the two teams have played on a Friday night under the lights. Uh, so, um, while it won't be Thanksgiving for the seniors, it'll still be kind of a special thing and a different thing to play under the lights at the stadium. Yeah, cross-town rivals, whenever they get together, can be a major holiday or not. It's always fun, and this will be a unique football matchup where the Presidents and Raiders are playing on a Friday night in April. And it's not baseball. <laughs> yeah. All right, Barretti's going to keep it himself, fighting his way forward, and he's in. The touchdown, Drew Barretti fighting his way and moving that pile, and he earns the six points for the Presidents. And uh, he shares that touchdown with his offensive line mates, I'll tell you. These guys look super firing off the ball. That was just a terrific drive by the Presidents. Uh, very powerful finish there, uh, just muscling the ball into the end zone. And so the Presidents, with uh, two minutes left on the first half. Our in for the extra point is Matthew Kelly, and is up and it is good. Nice job there on the hold by Stephen Gallant. Snap was a little low, but Gallant picked it up quickly and easily, and Kelly kicks it through. So with 2.11 left to go here in the second quarter, Quincy takes a 7-0 lead over the Hawks. Great stuff here. Very well done. Some a combination of execution and, and grit there, and the uh, presidents now two minutes away from the locker room. Let's hope they can... Uh, Avoid any issues and finish the half as they've played it thus far. Nice and solid and uh, penalty free. So Beretti uh, came over to the sideline, took his helmet off, grabbed a little water, and now he's back out there standing over the kicking tee. Dylan Rice back deep to receive for the Hawks. Hanover's uh, football uniforms, they look a lot like Notre Dame's, don't they? Yeah, the gold helmets certainly give it that look. All right, so we feel it at about the 17-yard line for Hanover, and Rice is going to get across the 30 to about the 35. We'll see where they mark him down. Uh, but a nice return there by Rice and some decent field position to start for the Hawks. Well, good special teams play by the Presidents again. They stopped Hanover short of the 35. Um, First and 10 for Hanover. Coaches are talking a little bit about some of the Hanover down the blocking on their special teams. Thought they saw a chop block or two, but nothing was called. 
Now here we go. This is interesting, John. Quarterbacks looking right into the sun. And a pass is going to be complete over the middle to Joseph Curran, and he makes oh, his way forward down the right sideline. And like you said, he sprints down the right sideline, and a big play there across the 30 up to the president's 29-yard line. That young man is only a sophomore, and he got the ball and just exploded down the sideline. Talk about giving your team a lift. Hanover, which has been somewhat moribund the whole first half, is now on the 31. Here's where their timeouts earlier in the half. How many do they have left, John? I believe they have two timeouts left. Okay. They called a lot of timeouts early on to make adjustments, and they may need them. All right down the right sidelines to pass, and it is almost oh. caught. Number 19, David Quinlan almost came up with a spectacular catch. Uh, but I, well, they, they were starting to move the chains for something, but I'm not too sure what happened there. But either way, pass was incomplete. Intended for number 19, David Quinlan. Yeah, I'll tell you, the coverage was there. Mora was there again, and I think that impeded the receiver's uh, vision. One other thing, if you take a look on your screen, uh, well, there's a... If you take a look at the screen and look at the shadows of the players, you can see that the sun is out behind the stadium. It's uh, to the south and west, so it's in the what I would call the left corner. So a receiver going down the right sideline when he's looking back, his uh, field of vision is affected by the sun as well. All right, they're going to say it was a false start on Hanover in the last play. Uh, so even if it was caught, it would have been negated by the penalty. So they'll move the ball back five yards and bring it by first and 15 for the Hawks at their Quincy 36. Interesting. Quincy chose to take the penalty, move them back. Again, this is confidence in your defense, John. Connor Monroe, the quarterback for the Hawks, looking again, looking down the right sideline again, has a man, and it is incomplete. Was again looking for Quinlan, and Quinlan might have gotten a hand on it, but nice coverage down there by the presidents. Again down there, Jim, was Sierra Mora. You know what's interesting? This is the uh, third pass of 20 yards or more, and every single one of them, the handover receiver has just gone up with one hand to try to bring the ball in. Um, there's a few reasons why that might occur, but it's also a sign for the coach that uh, might be a little bit of a reach going downfield 25 yards as they have. So let's see what they do here on second and long. When roll pressured out, has a man open, and it's complete to number two, John Pertosini. And Bernard Cini's going to run up to the right side. Has the first down and more up to the Quincy five-yard line. And the Hawks will call. Actually, the clock will stop for the first down. But with 126 left to go, they're going to be at the Quincy five first and goal. Yeah, this is pretty much exactly what you didn't want to see happening. Hanover making some plays here. That was a tough open field tackle opportunity for Quincy. So... Uh, can't fault the player on that. That that was very difficult to be out there all alone like that. One on one on the reception, and uh, once he eluded that tackle, it's all green in front of him. Great pressure by the presidents. And coming up to make the initial tackle was Muhammad Khan, one of the captains for the presidents. Yeah, and big number five six who's had a solid first half, Riley O'Connell. So Connell and Khan make the play there, and uh, the clock's running down to 40 seconds. It's going to be second and about seven here. Clock's down now at 30 seconds. A lot of time burned. Pass complete over to the right side, and in for the touchdown goes Joseph Curran. Made a nice effort at the, uh, at the pylon to dive in and break the plane for it to the touchdown. Got to tell you something, there's a kid whose name you will be hearing over the next couple of years. Uh, Joe Curran, only a sophomore. And he came from the left slot across the field. And uh, 
he ended up matched up with some linebackers that he just outran. And then after the reception, he got to the pylon. Well, there was an extremely effective high school point after. It cleared the goal post by about nine and a half inches there, and uh, that put the same point on the book that Adam Vinatieri uh, put on the book. So, 7-7, well, seven, seven. disappointing, but... It doesn't take the fact that Quincy's been solid all half and had a terrific first half um, off the books here, John. All right, so there's 24 seconds left to go here in the first half. And as you said, Jim, we are now tied at seven after the extra point attempt was good by Michael Russo, the senior kicker for the Hawks. You know, another casualty of the pandemic is that the uh, Quincy president boosters and not serving up those terrific sausages that we always look forward to when Quincy High is playing at home in the stadium. So hopefully next fall they'll be back. All right, Russo getting ready to kick it away for the Hawks. Gonna be fielded by Quincy High School's number 32, Gabriel Rodriguez. And Rodriguez making some men miss all across into Hanover territory, all the way up to the 37 yard line. And there's 15 seconds left, so Quincy might have a couple of shots at it. They have three timeouts left. And there is a flag on the play though, so we'll see what the call is. Great job by Rodriguez. Now we're talking about youngsters here. Gabe Rodriguez is only a freshman. And a terrific run back that is going to be wiped out by this penalty. A holding penalty again. This is the second holding penalty special teams. And that's disappointing. Well, the terrific run back stance and uh, Gabriel Rodriguez and the Rodriguez family can be talking about that one over dinner tonight, but the hold takes the uh, the yardage off the books, and now, what do you do if you're the president, John, with 16 seconds left? You give it a shot, or do you just kneel down and avoid trouble? I bet they may give it one shot here. Duper ready. We'll see what they do. This does not look like the kneel down type of team here. Coach and players. So let's see what they do. All right, ball spot on the Quincy 42-yard line. Brady looking down the right sideline for Marion Robinson and incomplete. Intended for number five, Amari Only took Robinson. six seconds off the clock, so they may have time for one more. We'll see. Brings Not up sure. Okay, one thing that's very nice to see on both sidelines, uh, I shouldn't say both sidelines, I should say this, both high schools, North and Quincy, um, there are a number of people who are giving up their time and uh, talent to work with the boys in both programs. The North Quincy High coaching staff has a number of former players, um, number of folks willing to help out as does the Quincy High staff and it's it's terrific to see. All right, presidents were trying to set up a screen there and they were trying to get it off to Matthew Kelly and excuse me that was number 14 not 44 well ploof uh, but they could not connect. Yeah with seven seconds left it looks like it might be prudent to just take a knee here and let the clock run out. You don't want to have something happen. Looks like they're giving it all due consideration. We'll see how the president close it out. But but this coaching staff has been terrific. Uh, from what we've observed today, they're very disciplined on the sideline. They're controlled. They're, you know, there's no arm waving. You know, it's, it's disciplined, measured coaching. Um, in addition, you see the athletes out there executing. They know what to do and they're doing a good job, so that's a sign that it's happening at practice at well, as well. They're going to hand it off to Steinberg. Steinberg will get up to the 45-yard line, and that will be the end of the quarter. And at the end of the half, 
We are tied at seven between the Presidents and the Hawks. With the Presidents, seven. Well, Jim, we'll take a uh, quick timeout here uh, during the half. Again, we are tied at seven between the Quincy Presidents and the Hanover Hawks. Uh, so we'll take a timeout here and be back with second half coverage in just one moment. And make sure there's an empty row between you and the next family. Please remember to also wear your facial covering at all times. And if you could, please refrain, refrain from standing on the fence and please find a seat in the stands. Thank you. Well, welcome back everyone to Veterans Royal Stadium. We're at the half. We are tied at seven between the Quincy Presidents and the Hanover Hawks. Teams are back out on the field to get ready for the third quarter. Real quick rundown, some very quick stats. Quarterback Drew Beretti for the Presidents, five of 10 passing for 42 yards. Rushing side, Jared Walker has seven attempts for 51 yards. And Isaiah Steinberg has seven attempts for 11 yards. Drew Beretti has four attempts and the touchdown for the Presidents as well. For reception, Sierra Mora has one reception. And Marion Robinson, Isaiah Steinberg, Jared Walker, and Matthew Kelly all have one reception for the Presidents. All right, kickoff is underway, and deep kick will go into the end zone, and Quincy will start from their own 20 to get things going here in the third quarter. For the visiting Hanover Hawks, quarterback Han Monroe, 8 of 13 passing for 97 yards and one touchdown. Uh, not much rushing for the Hanover Hawks here uh, so far here tonight. They have five attempts for only 15 yards, excuse me, 14 yards rushing. On the receiving side of the ball, John Bertosini has one reception for 31 yards. Dylan Rice, two for two yards. Joseph Curran has two for 44. Aiden Scalzi, David Quinlan, and Connor Moreau, uh, excuse me, and Quinlan all have one reception as well. All right, so Quincy, first and 10 from their own 20. Steinberg with the carry, and he's going to get hit and maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like it might be a loss of one on the play, actually. For a two-yard loss. Tackle by number eight. Not sure what the official is addressing over there, John, but uh, Steinberg and Beretti coming out of the locker room after halftime. They uh, missed that connection. Beretti actually had to do a 360, opened up to the wrong side, or the running back went to the wrong side, but um, that play did not work from the get-go. And after all the accolades for a clean and well-played first half, we're off to a bit of a balky start here as the presidents are inside their own 25 at the 22, looking at a second and 12. All right, Beretti in the shotgun. Looking to pass over into the flat, and it's complete, but brought down immediately is number 14, Will Plouffe. Nice job there by Hanover to come up and make the play and try to get the number. It looks like it was... That was that young man Curran yep. again. I'll tell you, Joe Curran, the sophomore. This kid is all football player. Let me tell you, he's... Uh, He's back there, he's one of the safeties, and he read that play beautifully from the get-go, and he arrived as the ball did. Curran is very fast. He can really get to the ball, and then when he catches the ball, he can really explode. But in addition, that was terrific uh, anticipation by the young man who is only a sophomore. Gonna bring up a third and long for the Presidents. Beretti looking to pass down the middle of the field. Nothing's there, and it is actually a nice pass there and complete to Marion Robinson. Ball comes loose, though, and Hanover's going to get it. And actually, one official is saying Robinson might have been down, but... Yes, you can see in the center of your bottom of your screen, there's an official who's decisively saying that the ball was down. Um, there are two ways that could happen. One... The receiver was definitely stopped, and they could have called the play dead for that reason. His forward progress had been stopped. Um, now the official is out there telling the referee that he believes that uh, it was a down by contact. So 
meaning with the ground. Let's see what happens. Well, they spot the ball at the 37-yard line. Looks like the official just, what's going on here? Oh, they're giving Quincy the first down. When they picked up the ball, I was a little nervous, John. I thought they were going to switch out footballs, which means the handover offense is coming out. But Correct. no, they just the play. placed the ball down. at the 35. And you were 100% correct, John. There was nothing there. But Beretti and Steinberg nonetheless connected. All right, pitch goes to number 23, Stephen Gallant. And Gallant trying to fight his way forward. It was almost hit in the backfield for a loss of three or four yards. But it's a nice job to stretch Correct. it out. And the they're going to get up to about the 38. Yeah, Gallant did a terrific job. This is another sophomore here. He's... Five, Trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Joe Curran from Hanover, but Gallant did a terrific job of eluding the tackle on the backfield. Ended up picking up a couple of yards. I'm sure he would have liked to have picked up more. He saw some green in front of him, but a three-yard gain on Second that play when it looks like he had his stuff to the backfield. 30. That is a win. Yeah, Gallant was all the way back to the zone 29-yard line before he moved forward and was able to get up. And there's a late substitution here for the presidents. I'm not too sure what happened. And Quincy's going to be forced to call a timeout. Timeout on the field called by Quincy. Yeah, it looks like it might have been a personnel package issue. I'm not sure. It seemed like one of the linemen felt he didn't belong on the field. And uh, we'll see. comes a young man and went out and it looks like they've got everybody they want now so it's straightened out here John um, it's 615 now on a beautiful Saturday evening daylight savings savings time has kicked in so this is just all all good stuff tonight for us playing in natural sunlight for some reason when I'm in Veteran Stadium and it's like this it always brings me back to the Somerville North Quincy High football game when we saw John Hanna <laughs> former Patriot great coaching the Somerville Highlanders and no one would stand within 10 yards of him the whole game he had a reputation for being nasty and feared in the NFL well clearly the Second entire Somerville sideline <laughs> was aware of that, and sure enough, after one year of coaching, he was done. It was the uh, early September Already? game. It was the first game yeah, of the season. Right. First game of the season. It was a warm night. We were in sunlight the whole time, and I still remember thinking if this were a night game and it would dark out, there would have been a red glow around him. <laughs> he was something else. He's trying to coach these kids from Somerville. Who you could tell most of them would have preferred to be playing soccer. They were all like the size of Isaiah Steinberg, and and they got this monster yelling at them. Even the coaches were staying away from him. And that's when I recall saying to you that night that I don't see Hannah lasting in high school coaching. And and he didn't just because of the dynamics. And for some reason, sunlight at Veteran Stadium reminds me of that <laughs> night. Back to Quincy High football here. All right, there was an offsize on Hanover, so he's up a second down and two. Oh, what and a Beretti fake. fakes it. I just hedged him. I was looking at Isaiah Steinberg, and Beretti's running up the middle of the field for a huge gain all the way up to the Hawks' 40-yard line. What a beautiful fake by Beretti. For a gain of 15. Beretti is having a terrific game for himself here. We don't know anything about him because we had not heard of him. Um, you know, as of last year when we were, or 2019 I should say, when we were talking uh, football and the presidents. Um, a lot of these guys we knew, but um, the... Hang on, I'll revisit my thought in a moment. All right, so first and 10 for the Presidents at the Hanover 40-yard line. Beretti in the shotgun. 
He's going to give it to Jared Walker this time. Walker up the middle, moves the pile forward. Nice block there by number 56 for the presence, Riley O'Connell, pushing everything forward. And Walker will get up to the 36. Tackle by number 74, Colin Frucci. Oh, I just checked uh, the lineup from Thanksgiving in 2019, and Beretti was on the 76. roster. But I don't recall seeing him in action. But I will tell you what, he is an impressive young man here. It's been mistake-free football as far as number 12 goes. You recall earlier in this drive, you made the play call that there was nothing there for him and yet he stuck a pass into Steinberg for a big first down play and um, then this big run by Beretti. Yeah, another Ooh. play action fake and Beretti gets popped as he throws the ball and was lucky he didn't get Beretti intercepted he just kind of uh, didn't have a chance there really Jim and yeah. Beretti goes all the way back and gets tumbled back to, to the ground but goes incomplete. Yeah, that was another attempt at an inside screen gone awry. And Beretti tried to force it in. Uh, because it was a screen play, he expected to see bodies around his target. And bodies there were. So that one got broken up. And um, so we're looking at a third and six at the 35. Probably four down territory based on what went on in the first half. And they're gonna give it to Steinberg. Steinberg trying to get over to the right side and gets pushed out of bounds. And they're gonna mark him out at the 34. So gain of two. Yeah, Hanover's got a guy down. Um, he's grabbing at his ankle. We hope he's okay. Colin Frucci, a senior. He's number 74. He's one of their big linemen, John, and um, he's been taking up a lot of space out there all game. Um, he just did a nice job of stretching things out, getting to the sideline, and I don't know what happened, whether someone stepped on his ankle or he just rolled it, but hopefully it's a type of injury that he'll be out a couple of plays and then he'll be back on his seat. We'll see. He was trying to get out of the play and looks like he got hit by one of his own men uh, or tripped up by his own men uh, so hopefully he is okay well you can see at the very bottom right of your screen there's uh, a trainer there she came over from the Hanover sideline but Quincy High has its tra athletic trainer out there too he's administering to the athlete as well um, one thing there's no shortage of is safety measures here at these games for the athletes. Um, they have a full-time athletic trainer for both teams at these games and very important. It's one of the things I was mentioning during halftime. I have a nephew playing over at BC High with coach John Brillo, who's a Quincy guy. But um, you worry. I was hopeful that our nephew, who's a uh, football lacrosse guy, he's going to be going back to back now, high intensity for, you know, like 10 to 12 weeks, and you just hope kids don't get injured because they've been off the playing field and out of the classroom, and for a lot of them, that meant very dormant for a long period of time. Then they get a few weeks to get in football shape, and that's uh, a very tall task. So hopefully kids get out of this football season injury-free, and we're hoping in particular right now, number 74, Colin Frucci, is among them. Fourth and fourth of the president. He's standing up talking to his trainer, so hopefully he's okay. All right, fourth and four now for Quincy. They need to get to the 30-yard line. Beretti, quick pass over to the right, and it's complete. Great catch there by Matthew Kelly, Beretti, and it should be right at the first down marker, and it is. Great catch by Kelly. Yeah, it's Kelly was on the south side of the 30-yard line. First down. Made sure he caught the ball, and uh, they're moving the sticks now. Number so, big first Kelly down. This is a great message by the president to come out in this 12-minute uh, quarter, right, John? Correct. And we're ticking down to about five minutes. Clock's running. First and ten for the president. They've had the ball the entire time here. A little bit of a slow drive starting out, but 
now they're starting to move things and uh, moving the chains, taking time off the clock, hopefully grinding down this handover defense. Brady fakes the handoff again, pass over the middle, Kelly wide open, great catch, makes a man miss, and Kelly goes in for the touchdown. Matt Kelly goes in for the six points and gives Quincy the lead. Oh, terrific job. You know, Beretti has been relentlessly steadfast looking over the middle. He hasn't let any, he's had a couple of passes batted down. He hasn't let anyone getting in his face bother him. And that time, Matt Kelly ran a beautiful route. Um, little square in route, got behind the linebackers. And it was delivered right on the numbers in stride by Beretti. Kelly never slowed down. Then he evaded a tackle just inside the five. And the point after hits the right upright. So a missed extra point there. We'll hope that doesn't come back to haunt. It's too bad now. Kelly's got his hands on his hips and he's upset. And that's a shame because he had a beautiful run after catch for the touchdown. And uh, you want him to start focusing on that and forget that kick. So he's out there doing it all for the presidents. And that's uh, a terrific drive by the presidents. Great response to the end of the first half where Hanover got downfield quickly and tied the game after essentially being dominated for most of the first half. Well, John's doing a uh, snap face, as Bill Belichick would say, <laughs> getting word out in the Twitter world, Twitter universe, about the uh, the score here. No, I'm actually looking up. I was trying to see um, um, Matt Kelly was going to be going to uh, St. Anselm in the fall uh, to continue his football career. I was trying. I knew he was going to a school. I just couldn't remember what school it was. So I uh, oh, wanted to go on to uh, the, the Quincy High Athletics Twitter page. Uh, and I knew it was there somewhere. So he's going to be going, uh, focusing. St. Anselm's is a great yep. school. It's local. So his parents are going to be able to continue to follow his career. Um, that Division Two, right, St. Anselm's? Yep. Yeah. There's a boy from Quincy in the recent past who uh, went up there to play basketball. Back to receive for Hanover, and, number three, uh, Dylan yeah, Price. that's a great school. The key is he'll get a good Rupert solid education. And it's nice to add in the football, but um, St. Anselm's is a great, they have some great programs up there. And as he said, just north of the border. So his parents can continue, or his family continue to watch his career progress. All right, Beretti kicks it deep, and it's going to be fielded finally by Hanover at their own 20-yard line, and going up the middle in the return was Dylan Rice, and big hit there put on him by Muhammad Khan, and Hanover will start at their own 31. Yeah, I'll tell you what, the return man Rice's return thought he was yards, about to up by number 52. hit pay dirt. Rice was flying down the field. And Mohammed Khan definitely let him First know that uh, Quincy special teams are still on duty out there. He really blasted him. And uh, you could tell heading back to the huddle, Rice is still out on the field in the offense. He's a wide out going to the top of your screen there. He really felt that pop. Right, First and 10 for the Hawks at their own 32. Pump fake pass by Monroe downfield and incomplete, but a flag is thrown. Flags on the play. Monroe's pass was. Sierra Mora looked like he got tripped up down there around the 40 yard line and fell into the intended receiver, and they're going to call pass interference. Flag on the play for defensive pass interference. Let it go, Ruben. 
So that's a first down. It's not, not a spot foul in high school. They gave him, uh, was it 15 yards or 10, John? Uh, 15. 15. Um, so although the foul occurred further down the field there, uh, just on the uh, roughly 38-yard line, the ball is still on the handover side of the field, but they've got a first down. Connor Murrow passes complete over to the left side. Joseph Curran, he catches it at the Quincy High 45-yard line, and that's where he's knocked out of bounds. Yeah, they're calling that a stopped forward progress, and they're keeping the clock running here. So we're ticking down to five minutes here in this third quarter, and Hanover just... They're airing the ball out like there's no time left, and they're down by three touchdowns here. They're just going long, long, long here. So Quincy defense has to make an adjustment. Row down the right side has a man open and cannot connect with number 19, David Quinlan, and it goes incomplete. Intended for number 19, David Quinlan. Yeah, Quincy's got zone coverage going on. They've got, you know, uh, in the big time they call it cover two. They've got two guys back there deep. And uh, that time, number 14, Will Plouffe, a junior, was out there alone. But I don't know if this guy's uh, the handover quarterback. I don't know what his stats are and passes longer than... 10 yards, but I don't think it's a high percentage. Now he's been overthrowing a lot of his receivers there, and we're going to have a false start on three different receivers for Hanover. False start on Hanover. Now, you attribute something like that to the nature of this season. It's spring football, they really haven't been together long. As you said, one of their games was canceled recently. But inciting that, this makes it all the more commendable how Quincy Highs performed today because they have played virtually mistake-free football and they've done an excellent job. They've looked very well coached the whole time. Moreau can pass, passes complete at the 40-yard line. He finds, uh, this time, David Quinlan, and Quinlan will pick up the first down, and they're going to mark him out of bounds at the 39. Yeah, probably should have saved that comment for post-game, right? <laughs> yeah, the minute you speak, they pick up a first down. Uh, how long was that gain, John? Uh, 12 yards. So they got a little over 10 that time. I mean, Hanover's looking for 20-yard pickups. They're being awfully greedy. That time it was 12. They needed, and that's what they needed for first down. They got it. But my point earlier about uh, the president still stands. They've played an excellent game. They've looked well coached, and they're executing out there. So let's hope they can step up here. My right, first and 10 for the Hawks at the Quincy 38. Handoff goes up the middle, and big run there for a handover. John Bertoncini. handoff to number two, John Bertoncini. Yeah, nice little compliment to the, the passing 17. that's been going on here. Uh, there was a little fake, that delayed handoff that time. And the ball on And um, there was a nice little seam gap between the left guard and the center, and right through there went the running back for a big gain. Quincy's adjusted his defense. They've got more defensive backs out there and they're vulnerable to the run. So Hanover has put the ball on the ground here. And Bertoncini gets it again. This time he goes over to the left side, makes a man miss in the backfield, and he gets up to about the 14-yard line. And it's going to be about a nine-yard gain. Yeah, President's going to need to adjust here. Tackle by number 44. So Hanover responding to the Quincy adjustment Second and, a half and uh, now it's the president's over. turn to respond back. It's second and short. 
Hanover ground game clicking here in this late in this third quarter, John. Oh. And Monroe fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, and nice job there. Marion Robinson comes up to make the tackle, and a flag is going to be thrown as well. Monroe's run to the left. Stopped by number 44, Matthew Kelly. Yeah, it looks like they're going to get... Uh, but there is a flag on the play. They're going to get a president for coming in late on the pile. I'm not sure what the referee is going to say. Yeah, he's... It's a personal foul personal here. Foul on the president. One of the sophomores on the field uh, got in there a little late. Um, and look to finish the, the tackle after the tackle had already been finished. So Hanover has got the ball in the red zone, first and ten at the seven. Let's see what this president defense can do, John. This is uh, their first big test of the game. All right, so as you said, Jim Ball at the seven yard line for the Hawks. 3.15 left to go in the third quarter. Monroe over to the right to pass, and it is complete, no, incomplete. Monroe's Ball was intended for Joseph Curran, but he could not bring it in. Four. Joseph Curran is incomplete. I'll tell you what, this kid Curran is uh, really something. That time, Second and goal for the Hawks. it was similar, or a similar design to plays that they've used, where he starts in the slot. This time, he went in motion. Prior occasions, he's uh, slipped out and gone behind the linebackers. This time he was in motion, came across the field, because he's so fast. He's just a fast runner. He can outrun the Quincy linebacker group. Monroe over to the right, and it is almost picked off. Actually, we'll see if it is picked off. They're going to say no. Look like it was number 32, Gabriel Rodriguez. Broken up. And Quincy's and insistent that he came up with the interception, but they're going to say it's incomplete. Yeah, the side judge and the top right of your uh, camera, you see him, or your picture rather, you see him right in front of the third down marker. He had a perfect view and very decisively and immediately called that incomplete. So. Great coverage nonetheless, so Quincy doing a terrific job in the red zone, John. Hanover's got a third and seven, and uh, let's see if the Presidents can finish this defensive stance. Monroe, plenty of time, passes over the middle, and it's incomplete. Pass intended for David Quinlan, but Cyril Mora was right there to help out on the coverage. Intended for number nine. Yeah, Mora has been really tested today. A uh, couple little issues. Several big plays, and that was one of them. He was all over that ball. Hanover with a little bit of a choice here, or decision, I should say. Um, it's fourth down. I'm not sure what they have as far as, like, their place kicker was, we'll just say, high schoolish about the point after. We don't want to criticize because he put the point on the board, but it was... Um, a little less than majestic. So they may think that he's, uh, the ball's on the seven, so we'd be looking at a 24 yard field goal. And uh, 20 yards plus is definitely testing uh, your average high school kicker. So Hanover looks like they're gonna go for it. And I'll tell you what, if the presidents can come up with a stop here, John, that would just be absolutely huge. All right, so timeout on the field with 2.55 left to go here in the third quarter. And when Hanover comes back, it will be fourth and goal from the seven. And we'll see what the presidents can make a big stop and force a turnover on downs. Real quick, I want to remind all of our viewers, you can log on to Quincy Access TV's website at qatv.org for program schedules, membership information, and replays of high school football. So again, log on to qatv.org for all that information and video on demand as well. Yeah, this ability to broadcast live is a, is a big plus, and we're going to have to put something together for the uh, Crosstown Rival game in April. Yep. We'll see if we can't get some advance notice to people so maybe uh, players can host some of their former teammates and 
watch the game live or maybe they can meet somewhere at one of Quincy's local struggling establishments but or perhaps come to Veterans Stadium what the heck <laughs> but one way or another here we go right. big fourth down fourth and goal man in motion Monroe rolling up to his right passes back to the left and it's an incomplete great job there Matthew Kelly coming up to help make the stop and Quincy's defense holds I'll tell you super discipline and great execution by the president defense that time a little misdirection play everything was going out to the right and then at the last moment quarterback looks back to his left they released a uh, receiver it was a tight end who had lined up on the right as well I believe John and uh, he just slid across hoping to take advantage of all the exuberance and excitement and intensity of the Quincy High defense but Matt Kelly experienced captain and leader of this defense this team stayed home watched that tight end and was there to break up the play Great job by the president's John. Just super stuff. Kelly was in his uh, outside linebacker position on the right side of the defense, and everything was going to his left. He started going there. He, he saw that tight end release, Jim, cut across the field, and he did a nice job to catch up to him and knock the ball away. I right, first and 10 now for the presence. Isaiah Steinberg on the carry, and he fights his way up to the 13 yard line. Nice run there by Steinberg. Oh, yeah, just what you want to see. A beautiful first down run right up the gut. Six yards picked up by Steinberg. Clock's running a bit. We're coming down under 230, and uh, the presidents are going to look to settle things down and grind out another drive here. That'd be just a super response to what had gone on you know end of the first half and then this offensive drive in the third quarter the handover offenses look pretty good but uh, this was just a bend no break drive let's see if the offense by the presidents defensively and let's see if the offense can not complement with a, uh, a nice long drive here Walker this time on the carry for the presence. Great job by Walker. Breaks through tackles. Over to the right side now. Cross up to the 40-yard line. And finally brought down at the 44. A fantastic run there by Jared Walker. First guy over to greet him. Number six. His compatriot in the backfield there, Isaiah Steinberg. So the two compadres, number six, number 21, out there making it happen for the president running game. And what a huge first down pickup by Jared Walker. And in addition to that, presidents are now at their 44 yard line after having started at the seven. Clock running down to a minute. Great field position. Things looking good for the presidents here, John. First and 10 for the presidents at their own 44 yard line. Steinberg on the carry, trying to fight his way forward and get some help from the offensive line to fall forward for a gain of one. Held up for a one yard gain. Yeah, that time Hanover was totally committed to stopping the run. They had seven bodies up in the box. Let's watch how they line up. You see them right now, they got four linemen. They've got two linebackers there, 88 and uh, 28. And then they have some defensive backs. And um, watch what happens as uh, Beretti breaks the huddle and gets up to the line. The linebackers for Hanover are jumping right up into what they call the gaps, the spots between the linemen. And uh, now they're looking for four wideouts, looking more to defend against the pass. 20 seconds left to go. And wide opens Jared Walker in the flat, across the 50-yard line, across the 40-yard line in Hanover territory, still on his feet, fighting his way forward. Another nice run by Jared Walker up to the 29. Just spectacular stuff. And ends up in another president's first down. I'll tell you something, Mr. Walker is very amped up. He spends a lot of energy after his play. Tackle by number 28, he's, he's, uh, of definitely fired up there, and he should be. That was a great play, very well designed by the presidents. They used four wideouts to spread out the Hanover defensive backfield. I've uh, been talking about number 88, 
the linebacker for Hanover, who's been eagerly jumping up to the line, looking at gaps. He watches Steinberg like a hawk. And uh, on that particular play, our man number 21, Walker, slipped out of the backfield, got behind where the linebackers had been located. And once he uh, had the ball in his hands, and Beretti delivered it quickly, John, Walker was gone downfield, so presidents are now in Hanover territory, first and ten with the ball on the 29-yard line of Hanover. That was a 26-yard gain on that last play from Beretti to Walker, and again, presidents will be at first and ten from their own 29-yard line. They let the clock run out, John, and uh, they're going to head down the north end of the field here. And uh, presidents are going to go from our right to our left, hopefully 29 yards worth. So it's going to be first and 10 from the 29-yard line as this fourth quarter starts, John. And this is a terrific, terrific offensive performance and a big, big drive by the presidents here. The presidents in perfect position here to begin this fourth quarter, up 13-7, to and again at the 29 to try to put some more points on the board. Presidents come out four receivers set, trips to the left of Drew Beretti, the junior quarterback for Quincy High. Beretti's going to keep it himself after faking the handoff, and the Hawks are all right there to bring him down. Looks like he'll get Beretti back to the line of scrimmage for no gain. For no gain, brings up a second and ten for the Presidents. Tackled by number 75, Tyler Coleman. I know it's impressive, John, and it's a small thing, but it speaks to discipline again. This Quincy sideline, they're still socially distanced, they're spaced. They've done a very, very good job here. This is a disciplined football team. You like to see that. Well, especially after the uh, from that. especially after the scare last week that they had with the COVID uh, and the, putting the protocol and missing their game last week, I'm sure the coaches are well aware of what's going on this week. All right, Drew Beretti running over to the right side. His helmet came off, but he's still on his feet, and a late flag is thrown as well. Yeah. Beretti gets up to the 25, but we'll see what the penalty is as well. Yeah, it's been getting a little yappy out there, and I I got to stop paying homage every time I say something nice it blows up in my face I was just talking about discipline and I'm hopeful that this flag is against the Hawks because there was a lot of yappy back and forth going on over on that far sideline let's see what they do we'll see what the call is Several Quincy High kids got over there upset about the fact that Beretti's helmet, which had come flying off, uh, he was still getting bombarded on the sideline. So this is against Hanover. Happy to see that. A personal foul over on the far sideline. Um, I suspect that on Hanover. someone got over-eager seeing the that Quincy the president quarterback within there. On Hanover's uh, and a half yard line. Sight, so. Uh, so they're going to move the ball all the way up to the 13 yard line after the penalty. Uh, but the other thing too is with the with Drew Beretti's helmet coming off, he has to come out for a, a one play at least. Uh, so Quincy will send in their backup quarterback and try and see who is in there. In the game at quarterback for the president. Actually, going to say uh, Matthew Kelly's going to take the snap here. Kelly hands it off to Steinberg, and Steinberg cannot get anything happening on that play. Hanover did a nice Steinberg job focusing Johnson. on him, getting a push, and going to be a loss of two on the play, back to the 16, making a loss of three, excuse me. Yeah, I have to tell you that uh, there's a young man out there tonight who's just had a, he's another one who's had a terrific game, is number 54, Parker Mullen. Um, his snaps have just been dead on square in the numbers. Um, 
mostly to Beretti. Um, there have been a couple of punts. You've talked about points after. Um, and Mullen is really performing Drew very Beretti consistently quarterback for and very well here in that center position. He's only a junior, too, John. Right, so it's going to be up a second and 13. Drew Beretti back in the game after sitting up that one play with his helmet coming off. Beretti looking to pass. Gets hit as he throws the ball, and it is oh. incomplete. Was looking for a Marion Robinson. He's looking and for a flag. And they're going to say Beretti. no. A.J. Mancini was the defender for the Hawks right Number there. Marion Robinson. I'm not sure the there's zone. an official at the Light bottom three, of your screen. Three. Well, you're not going to see him actually because he's not not showing up, but up I don't understand how the side judge didn't see something there. Head he had a perfect 16. view of what went on, and it looked to me like uh, there was a little contact. What do you think, John? Um, I think there was contact, but I think the defender, he brought his left hand over, and the official couldn't see his hand that kind of tugged on Robinson a little bit. Uh, so it might have been hidden from the, the official's view. What kind of gotcha. But either way, we'll bring up a third and 13 now for the presidents. Under 10 seconds on the play clock. Presidents just get it off. Beretti looking to pass, and it's complete to Steinberg at the five-yard line where he's going to be knocked out of bounds, and he's going to be just shy of the first down. Clock continue to run here. Continues to run. It's going to be fourth and short. A long yard here. Interesting call. Presidents are right at the five-yard line. Be about a 22-yard field goal if they were to try it, but they're going to go for it. They're showing some real confidence in that offensive line here, John, and it's actually well-placed confidence the way these boys have played tonight. All right, so fourth and one for the Presidents. Looks like a direct snap to Steinberg here. What's going on? And I think. Hanover noticed that, Jim, and they got to call a timeout. Quincy, you come, come up with a little cap. trickery there, the Wildcat yeah. possibly. Yeah. Uh, Beretti was over on the sidelines, and they had the two compadres there, Steinberg and uh, Walker. Yeah, Beretti actually lined up as a wide receiver. Oh, he was he was a wide out. Okay. Yeah, he was lined up next there. to uh, gotcha. next to Matt Kelly, and also over there was uh, Marion Robinson. So they went straight Wildcat, and um, Hanover gets a timeout. All right, so timeout with 7:57 left to go here in the game. Quincy on top, 13 to seven, but they're going to have a fourth and one from the five yard line. See if they can get the first down. Yeah, that'd be terrific. Right now, we're under eight minutes in the game, and it would be nice to see Quincy put points on the board here and take a little more time off the clock. We get this down around five, five uh, minutes with a two-score differential. The presidents are going to look good. All right, Beretti now in the shotgun. Walker and Steinberg behind him, and lots of movement. There was initially was a signaling before I saw the right guard pull out there. So I'll say one of the Hanover linemen jumped, and then, like you said, Jim, the right guard for Quincy moved to try to draw it, but we'll see what the call is. And uh, it's they going got against the presidents. False start, so that's regrettable. So I'll push him back to the 10-yard line now, and it bring up a fourth and six. Be fourth and six. Yeah, very different dynamic. There are some who argue you've got a little more room, uh, but I don't know. Fourth and one, you don't need all that much room. That would have been far more preferable. I have to take the blame on that one. I've been talking <laughs> about discipline and 
no penalties and everything. So the Danny Jackson curse. I, I was <laughs> I was just thinking of that yeah, as well. The, the uh, running back from North Quincy back in the day. Yes, yeah, class of 2008. Great athlete, great kid. All right, so Quincy comes to the line again, back now at the 10 yard line. Need to get to the f uh, four for a first down. Oh. Beretti, a oh, wow, nice oh. job evading the sack and running in. He's going to get up to the five, it looks like, and be just shy of the first Great down. Scramble. It looks like he might be. Oh, no, the, the official the is down. signaling it's hand over ball. So the side judge, he was standing right next. There's an official who was standing right next to the first down marker. And he saw where Beretti went down, and he missed by inches. I almost like to see a measurement there, but they've already moved the sticks. Well, that's why I think it's, they've already moved the sticks, so that's why I think it's close. But it, it was close. They had to get, what, to the four. All right. Yeah, they got to about the four and a half there, so... But excellent effort by Beretti, Jim, oh. as you said, in the backfield. Looked like he was going to have a loss and somehow gets around that. Picked up five and a half yards. It was super. Our right, handover comes out and pass is complete to number four, Joseph Curran. And Joseph they're going to mark him down at the, about the 13-yard line on the reception. Yeah, Hanover is doing an excellent job of getting that young man open. And the fact of the matter is there's just no one who can run with a kid. You know, there's two qualities in an athlete, quickness and speed. And what we're seeing in Joseph Curran is that he's got both. But tonight the speed factor is really making the difference for him. And there he goes in motion. This time, Bertrand Cini is going to get the carry for the Hawks. He's going to pick up the first down Bertrand and get up to about the 20-yard line. For five yards, giving Hanover a first down. So the sticks are going to move, and the clock will start once they're relocated. They're in place now, so we've got the home field clock operator. I've noticed that. Um, First and ten for Hanover. As soon as that stick Hanover hits the ground, the boom, the clock's been moving. So when the white, you know, the Hawks have the ball. So we're at 6.40 now to left to go in the game. And ball comes loose. And Quincy has picked it up, Jim. And going into the touchdown, Jared Walker. Oh, boy. What a turn of events there. Walker picked that up cleanly, no hesitation, and bombed it into the end zone. And what a dagger from the Hawk perspective. A huge turnover. Referee is consulting with the back judge. It looks like there's a little discussion going on here, perhaps about whether he could advance the ball as he did. But that, oh, incomplete pass. Uh, that we'll could see. Be we'll called an incomplete pass because it was that little shuffle forward. Yep. So we'll see what they call here. That might be the call. When you, uh, what's happening here? Looks like. Oh, they, they. We're gonna have to hear from someone about this. The Hanover sideline may correctly be arguing that that was an incomplete pass. No matter what, how you do it, when you toss the ball like that to an athlete who's in front of you, it's considered a forward pass. And what the Hanover coaching staff is arguing about, and if we had the great Bill Early here, we could tell, oh, they're going to run, is this a replay? Yeah, we're going to get the replay in the big screen here. Yeah, and you can see you it was, that looked like, so they ran a replay on the big screen, and that looked like Hanover has a, a worthy argument. I do believe so. Well, the extra point attempt here for Quincy's up and good. Matthew Kelly puts it up, and Quincy will now take a 19 to seven lead, excuse me, a 20 to seven lead. After the extra point. Well, I have to say, I mean, I'm uh, a Tommy Heinsohn type when it comes to covering <laughs> Quincy sports. I, 
I will make no apology for being a homer on these games and these calls. However, I would say that I think Hanover's got a very legitimate gripe that uh, the officials missed that call and that that was clearly a forward pass. Um, the side judge was in on the conference and I don't know if it's possible that somehow at the time the ball was flipped, the athlete was even with the quarterback or something, but it was clearly one of those plays designed to toss it where the quarterback catches it and just flips it in front of him, a little right. toss for the athlete and essentially give the runner, um, you know, you give him a little head start, he gets a head of steam up and then you get him the ball in the backfield and that's what it looked like that play was designed to be but somehow the officials saw it otherwise, and we do not complain as the presidents are about to kick off. They still have not updated the scoreboard here. I'm trying to make sure that, yeah, okay, the officials are coming over to make sure that the scoreboard shows the extra point was good. Yeah, that's all right, as long as, uh, so now the officials are conferring in the end zone. The referee's conferring with, the gentleman who's been the back judge. And, um. Oh, it looks like they were trying to get the football out of the netting okay. there as well. So maybe they weren't conferring. All right, so 6.30 left to go here in the game. Quincy on top, 20 to seven. After that fumble return by Jared Walker and the extra point by Matthew Kelly. And Drew Barretti's going to kick it away. Hanover's going to take it at their own 19-yard line. And building up ahead of steam there was Dylan Rice over to the left side. And he'll get brought down Dylan at about Rice the 40. The I'll tell you, in sports they talk about making your own breaks. On that particular play, it was a bang-bang play. And the alert Quincy High defense all over the ball. And uh, there was no hesitation on the part of Jared Walker. And um, as a result, they put points on the board. So we'll give the boys credit. Looks like we get a timeout here. I missed who called it. But there's uh, it's a tough situation for the Hanover Hawks with 5.20 to go. Five minutes, 20 seconds. Uh, their offense was a little quick strike there at the end of the first half. They showed the capability of doing it, but that was one possession, John. Uh, the entirety of the first half, they didn't really move the ball too well, and most of the second half, they have not had success moving the ball against the president, so it looks, looks good for the presidents as we sit here now with 5.20 to go, and let's hope the defense can keep it going here as Hanover starts first and ten at their 40. Monroe rolling out, avoids a sack, nice job, throws it downfield, and it is complete to number four, Joseph Curran at the Quincy 25. Joseph Rice. I'll tell you, that kid is something else. Did a nice job of focusing on the ball, he was over first and ten on well covered. 25. He was hit immediately With six, as the ball arrived the by Jared Walker. But he focused and made the reception. So first and ten now from the 25. Monroe looking, looking down the middle of the field, and it is almost picked off there by Marion Robinson. Monroe's the handover receiver didn't see four, the ball Jimmy coming. Rice. Robinson cut off the route, but just couldn't pick it off. Knocked down by number six, Isaiah. That time, that Johnson. play was dictated by the president pressure. Um, Bringing up a second and ten. As a result the of them getting in on the quarterback, he threw the ball a little early there, and uh, terrific pressure by the presidents resulted in that early pass that uh, was about five yards behind where uh, Curran actually was. Which I think that was number six, Isaiah Steinberg on the uh, defensive play there for the Presidents. Monroe again gets out of harm's way, rolling out. 
Pass is picked off there by Quincy. And that's Isaiah Isai Steinberg, Steinberg again. Steinberg does a nice job and get up to the 13 yard line. The defense, another nice job there for the Presidents. Absolutely terrific job by the President defense. So they do it again. They step up. They come up with a huge Quincy interception. And now it's uh, the up to the Quincy offense to run that clock out. So just a great job by the Presidents. They really have uh, played solidly on both sides of the ball tonight, John. And with that interception, I would say the fate of the Hanover Hawks is sealed here. After the play, there was a penalty after the play. There was a hold on Quincy after the interception. So they'll move the ball back a little bit as well. Well, that's something for coaches to talk about this week because that's the third straight well, not straight, but the third time there has been a penalty on a play of that nature. We've had uh, two on interceptions and I think one on a punt or kickoff, or it might have been on three interceptions, but they've had three situations where long runs occur and guys uh, trying to help the runner out from behind the play and end up hitting someone in the back. And um, Sure, the president coaches will address that. So with and the penalty, ball goes back to the seven yard line. So first and 10 for the presidents at their own seven. And off goes to Jared Walker over to the left side and Walker will get up to the 10 yard line before he is brought down there by the Hanover defender. Coming up was Christian Carlson on the tackle. Three yards. Tackled by number 40. Lanigan. About a three yard gain. That's fine from the president perspective because the key here now is they're looking to run that clock down. We're going to be under five minutes when the presidents break the huddle here. And uh, in a two score game, the way the presidents Brings have been seven, playing, seven the they president. essentially have their fate in their own hands here. Just need to not make a mistake, avoid a turnover, and they run down as much of the clock as they can. Even if they have to put the ball or put the game back in the hands of their defense. Both sides of the ball have been great tonight. Handoff goes to Jared Walker. Walker fighting his way up to about the 12 yard line before he is brought down. So again, clock's going to run Walker down now for one yard. under Four minutes. Bring up a third and six for Quincy. So bring up a third and about five now for the, the presidents. Yard line. Ball spotted just shy of the 13. And as you said, Jim, the clock will now tick under four minutes as the presidents come to the line to snap the ball. Third and five. Great job by Beretti of running down as much of the clock as he can. And Beretti, ball comes loose, but it looks like the presidents are able to jump on it. There were four Hanover Hawk defenders there, but coming up to jump on the ball for the presidents was Luke Murphy. Beretti is very calmly signaling, and I'll say to his credit, that that was a forward pass. Now he's trying to plead the case to the official and um, in any event, it was not a loss of possession. That's the critical key. And here's where a comment I made earlier um, will come into play. Already um, play. Quincy has an absolutely terrific center, yeah, Junior Parker Mullen. And um, it's going to be very for critical for him to field, deliver the ball. And let's get a clean punt here. Um, we got 4th and 11, balls at the 8. So he's going to be either at or near the end zone. I don't know if you recall the play, John, once before where the Patriots took an intentional safety rather than run the risk of uh, a turnover. And uh, that's worthy of some consideration here as well. 
um, given the score. One of the big times it did that was against the Rams in 2001, I think, in the regular season. Um, well, maybe maybe on, it wasn't the Rams, I, but... I don't remember that detail, <laughs> please. But, uh, yeah, that was... Uh, that have to show off. Here, I was impressing uh, both of my fans out there <laughs> with what I was talking about, and you have to specify game down Back quarter time situation. Back to receive for handover number three. Mr. Caleri is quite right. the sports fan with quite the memory. Which is great. So here we go. This is big. All right, Barretti's about seven yards deep in his own end zone. Good great snap. snap. And nice high kick for a Barretti. Right. It's not gonna be a long one, but what a bounce. <laughs> So again, talk about making your own breaks. Sky high punt. Um, a terrific snap and a fair catch for him. by Mr. Reliable, Parker Mullen. First and uh, great job by Beretti. He calmly handled it in the end zone. He has shown a lot of poise, Sean. And uh, that's a great quality in a quarterback. He's only a junior, but terrifically poised back there. Um, he got the punt away. They got a great bounce. So Hanover now is down by, well, it's, it's two scores here, easily. And they've got three minutes and 23 seconds. So look for the Hawks to be airing it out here. A quick pass by Monroe is completed to 40 yard line. And going up to about the 31 is the ball carrier. Pass complete to number 15, Aiden Scalzi. Aiden Scalzi on their return, excuse me, on their reception. Tackle by number 32, Gabe Rodriguez. Jim, I just received a text from uh, Martin Dunham, who's listening in on the uh, the live Eight cast, the and Hawks. he said, for an intentional safety, we have to mention the North Quincy 1992 Super Bowl, uh, an intentional safety f that they did in that game. Gee, I didn't recall that. I don't remember that either, but... Um, I'll take Martin's word for it as a uh, North Quincy football historian that he is. No, I'm with you there. The Quincy High fans who are tuned in tonight aren't going to want to hear this. But <laughs> the 92 Super Bowl, two guys from Montclair, both my neighbors, Keith Lentini and Liam Higgins, put on a terrific show. And it was at the end of the game. We'll go over it in a minute. We watch what Hanover has on a second and six. Two and a half minutes to go. Monroe passing into the end zone, and it is batted away by Ciro Mora. Great defensive effort by Mora. Right there with the defender, uh, the re receiver, excuse me. And Mora just knocks it away. Mora had perfect position. He was inside the receiver, eyes back on the ball. He played that perfectly. Absolutely terrific job. Uh, he's actually shaking off his hand now. He, his hand got a little banged up when he banged the football. I think he caught the nose of the football right in the palm of his hand. and People don't realize how much that can hurt. But an absolutely terrific job by Mora, who's continuing to have a great game here. Third and long for 222 the Hawks. left to go. Monroe looking, looking, has Curran in the flag. He complete to him at the 20. Stays in bounds up to the 10-yard line now and is finally brought down. But a nice run there by Joseph Curran inside to the 10. To number four, yeah, it looks Curran. like uh, I think they're going to stop the clock. One of the officials said he was signaling that it was to keep going. And now the referee says, yes, it's going to keep going. I think the back judge had it. Current out of bounds, and the side judge had him still in. So, another favorable call for the presidents tonight. Under two minutes to go now in the game. First and goal from the seven. Monroe passes, and it is, let's see, one off two receivers, and they're going to say no, incomplete. Monroe's pass is incomplete. Well, and the over. side judge over in the corner of the end zone, you see him at the top of your screen. He's heading back toward the rear pylon now. No hesitation whatsoever, and he had a clear view. He came out and he waved it off. It was kind of a double tap in the end zone. The ball's up in the air, and uh, it went off the chest of the handover receiver. And now we're looking at a second... And goal from the eight. 
Yeah, both back judges there, Jim, immediately signaled incomplete pass. All right. Monroe, quick pass over to the right, and it is complete for the touchdown to number 19, David Quinlan. All right, so right away now we're going to transition to special touchdown. teams. It's going to be critical now. I'm expecting, uh, let's see, 20 to 13. No, they still probably Michael kick Russo the extra point, and they're going the to. Point. So it's going to be important to see if Hanover can execute this special point. You know, they're still in the game. If they do, they'll be down six. And um, I mean, they're still in the game either way, but they'd have a shot at a win if they execute the special point here and execute an onside kick. 140 left to go in the game. Again, 20 to 13 with the extra point to come. Quincy on top. Good snap, good hole. Kick is up, and it is good. He drilled that. So now we got a huge play here with a minute 40 to go. The presidents have to execute on this kickoff and retain possession. Hanover's going to be uh, looking to try an onside kick. Once the ball gets past or travels 10 yards, it's up for grabs. So. We'll see how the presidents do. If they can cover this kick, they should be in good shape, John. How many timeouts does Hanover have? Uh, I do not have that number. I think they have three left, I think, but I'm not, I'm not okay. positive. Okay, all right. So, uh, on the scoreboard, it looks like it's three left, yes. Yeah, so, Hanover will start calling timeouts right away if the presidents do cover the kick and have the ball. So. There's a lot of pressure here for Quincy to finish this ball game. They've got to execute first on special teams and then on offense. And let's see what they do. They're getting some hands guys up to the 50 yard line. I'm not sure why there's imbalance like there is here. What are, what are they doing there? I don't like this. So Quincy's now trying to adjust, get everything set and they go to that imbalance and, oh, Whistle was blown. Right, I think Quincy job. called the timeout. Whistles before the play. Are they calling a timeout? I I'm mean, not, I'm not too sure. I'm, whistles were blowing just as. Yeah, apparently uh, that kick is not going to count. I don't know what happened with Quincy. They went out there and they weren't to organize, which is a bit of a surprise. They're still not really organized, John. Um, and. They're very imbalanced. They've only got two guys over on our side, the near side of the field. And well, fortuitously, they covered that onside kick perfectly. So all's well that ends well there, but that's some film that perhaps will be looked at a bit by the coaches. I'm not quite certain what what was going on there, but um, the athletes did a good job, and that's one of the things. takes over, first and ten. One of the things that uh, Coach Belichick always line. talks about is athletes execute, and they make the plays one or minute, don't make the plays. Well, in that four. particular instance, number 21, Jared Walker stepped up again. So s several guys have been very reliable and really perform well all game here. And uh, I give great credit to one of the unsung guys, um, the center, Parker Muller. All right, so 135 left to go here in the game. Quincy did call a timeout after that to give themselves a little extra time to go over things here. Yeah, the ball's at the 45, so that's a bit of a safe zone for them. And uh, you can see they're coming at things very conservatively. They're going to focus on trying to run the clock out. We're ready with the nail down. Force Hanover to use its timeouts. Not sure what's going on. I mean, players are uh, congratulating each other, so. Is Hanover out of timeouts? I don't know. I'm not too sure. I think they have. 
School board says they have three. I don't recall how many. So I know they haven't called, you know, they get five timeouts per half, but I know they haven't called all five, but it looks like they're just going to let it go. Well, for some reason, players are out there congratulating each other. And, uh, well, we like sportsmanship. Not sure what to think. We're ready with another well, kneel down. Less than a minute to go here in the game, and one more kneel down, and Quincy will come up with the and first victory up. on the season. Third and 11 for the president. Well, this is a good sign. Hey, take it home. And um, a very solid win for the president's John. All right, so Beretti comes up for the final kneel of the game, and that will do it. There's 30 seconds and left, and Quincy High School Beretti. coming out, doing a nice job here, outstanding effort on offense and defense, and they're going to get we'll a 20 to 14 win. victory over the Hanover Hawks. Great win against a very solid football program, the Hanover Hawks. But the presidents were up to the task. Looked very, very solid all night, John, didn't they? And um, this was a win that they certainly deserve. Very hard earned, some great execution, and um, very happy for the boys and the coaching staff tonight. All right, well, Jim, we are going to be back here on Thursday, QA TV, to see these Hanover Hawks yet again. This time they'll be taking on the North Quincy Raiders at the stadium on Thursday, April 1st at 7 p.m. Uh, so we'll get a chance to see the Hawks again, and they'll be back into the city of Quincy uh, for a chance to try to get a victory at least one time here uh, in the city. Uh, North Quincy this week, uh, we're supposed to be playing Plymouth South, but they are in COVID protocol right now, so that game has been postponed. Uh, so they're going to have a bye week this week and again be here on Thursday uh, evening uh, to play Hanover as well. But here right now, Quincy High School with a nice victory, first victory of the season, 20-14 to 14 over Hanover. We'll quickly run down some stats. First for quarterback of the Presidents, Drew Beretti, 11 of 18 passing for 130 yards and one touchdown. For the rushing side of the ball, Jared Walker for the Presidents had 11 attempts for 91 yards. Isaiah Steinberg had 12 attempts for 15 yards. And Beretti rushed for 7 yards and one touchdown. Uh, for receptions, Matthew Kelly led the way with three receptions for 47 yards and a touchdown. Jared Walker had two receptions for 29. Steinberg had two for 14. And Marion Robinson had two for 28. Sierra Mora had one for 13. For the visiting Hawks, quarterback Connor Monroe was 16 of 30 passing for 203 yards and two touchdown passes. John Bertoncini had six rushes for 41 yards. And for receptions for the Hawks, Joseph Curran led the way with seven receptions for 118 yards and one touchdown. David Quinlan had three for 30 and a touchdown as well. So those are the final stats here at the stadium tonight. Yeah, really happy for Coach Kevin Carey and the Presidents. They looked really solid tonight. Um, played a, a good game on all sides of the ball. Um, Special teams, defense, offense. A uh, few mistakes here and there, but you know, a couple of the guys who made some mistakes is because they were out trying to make plays, and sure enough, they made several plays tonight. So there were a number of players who really stood out. Um, there's good balance too. There's seniors, juniors, and sophomores who are performing. Very, very impressed with the junior quarterback for the president is Drew Beretti. Poise, execution, he was the whole box of chocolates tonight. Very, very happy for him too. So um, I look forward, to, when we come back for North Quincy, I'll tell my Keith Lentini, Liam Higgins story, all right? So those of you who are uh, just interested in high school sports and high school football, you can eagerly await that moment and the Quincy High fans have been spared <laughs> stories about two kids from Montclair. All right, well, as I mentioned, Quincy improves to 1-1 one one on the season. Next week on Thursday, April 1st, they'll go down to Situate and take on the Sailors. And as I mentioned as well, we'll be here again on Thursday, April 1st at 7 p.m. when the Red Raiders, excuse me, the Raiders host the Hanover Hawks here at the stadium. Real quick, we want to thank all the QA TV crew that came out here, Ryan McWade on camera, and Chris Potter, our engineer and director, making everything possible here tonight at Veterans Memorial Stadium. So again, final score, Quincy 20, Hanover 14. For Jim Timmons, my name is Jonathan Caleri. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of QA TV Sports. We'll see you next time.